Working in a professional setting, you'll realize very quickly that data isn't perfect. There are columns we don't need and rows that are damaged, dirty, or useless. We need ways to exclude certain bits of information so that the results make sense. We do this using filtering. <music> In this video, I'm going to talk about filtering and filtering is actually a huge subject in Tableau and there's so many things you can do. So we're going to start off slow. We're going to talk about the keep only and exclude function, which is kind of like um, it's part of the filtering. So let me show you how it works. Let's say I have the state and group. So I'm going to bring that in and we're going to bring in the delivery fee. All right. So pretty simple, right? We have here what you'll notice in this data set is we have this null and this x value. Now I spoke with the client already, which is me, and the client said, yeah, those are just errors. You can just get rid of that in your visualization. So how do I do that? Well, do I go back into Excel and delete them? No, you don't ever want to do that. You want to preserve the raw data and all the processing you want to do here, right? As much as you can anyway. So I want to exclude this null and this X from the analysis. So how do I do that? Well, this is when we use filters. Okay, so kind of your starting point for filters, I would say is just using keep only and exclude. So let's start with exclude. If I click on this null, and I just leave the mouse like that's it, right? So let me show you that again, you just click. And you just leave it, right, you come up with this little menu, I can also do it that once it's already been selected, I just hover my mouse over and I wait a second. Okay, and you'll see this keep only and exclude. And basically what this does is if I say exclude, it just removes it from this visualization, in essence, creates a filter. So if I go exclude, there you have it now it's gone. So where did it go? Well, if you look over here, you'll see this little filters pane and this new one has been added. So if I go in here and right click go edit filter, what it's actually done is it's crossed it out. It's saying don't include that. Right. And the reason it's slash is because we have the exclude setting on saying just exclude this. Don't even show it in my visualization. Well, we want to apply it for X as well to get rid of that. So I can just tick it. Okay. And go apply. And now that has been removed and I can carry on with my analysis. So that is kind of like your starting point. You can also do the opposite. Instead of removing things, you say, oh, well, I want to only keep these things. So let's get rid of this filter. I can right click and go remove or like everything else we just drag and drop it out so i drag it i just drop it here in the gray all right and then we go back to the original so i can highlight the other ones i can either hold control and select individual ones or hold shift and select a whole range like so i can hover and say i want you to keep only these ones okay so now we have the filter let's go edit filter have a look at what it's done and here you can see they've all been ticked and the exclude button has not been used, right? So it is only showing me those ones, all right? So that is basically kind of your start to filters. I can go the other way as well. So let's go OK and get rid of this. Instead of using keep only or exclude, I can just go straight into filters. So I have this state and group, right, that I've used for this visualization. I can just bring this one and put it into filters. So if I do that. I have those settings by default, everything's going to be ticked because it's the first time we're creating a filter and we can just get rid of the ones we're not interested in like that and go apply. Let me just move this so you can see it apply. That's pretty much all there is to filters, right? When you're getting started. So this is a dim dimension filter because we're filtering a dimension. I can also use these two buttons, which is it selects all of them. Or it selects none of them and this is really useful for when you know you have a lot bigger lists right it just makes things a little bit easier like that right or i can select a range of them so let's say i click and drag and then i press space it ticks all of them or i can just tick it like so okay so that's another little kind of shortcut and we go okay so that is basically your starting filter now let's talk about filters in terms of um, components, not part of your visualization. So what does that mean? Let's say I bring in a uh, interaction method and I drop it into columns. What that's done is it's basically split that delivery fee. Okay. Actually let's add the label in. I'm just going to press this button right here and let's just go back a step. So let's get rid of this interaction method. And I want you to look at new South Wales. So we have 8,864. Let's bring interaction method in and it's basically split up 
those values between the interaction method. And let's say my analysis, I'm only interested in the corporate notice. I can actually click on this label and go keep only. Okay, so it gets rid of the other one, which is the government notice. You'll also notice that, that um, we now have an added filter in here. And I can open this up by right-clicking edit filter or simply double-clicking. So now we have it ticked. Now what happens if I get rid of this one? Okay, and I remove it from the visualization. What happens to this 8024? Does it go back to the original? No. Well, the reason for that is because this filter is still here. So you don't, just because you've used something in a filter doesn't mean you have to use it in the visualization. In fact, you can filter anything and this will visualize whatever is left, okay? Or whatever the rules you've set for here are. So let's say I go Metro Regional, drop it here, you can see that little orange triangle. And I say I'm only interested in Metro and go OK. It filters down again, right? So that is how your um, filters work. So in essence, there are three kind of main main types of filtering. You have your dimensional filters, things like this, right? The ones we just did. The way date and time works is a little bit differently, uh, a little bit different. We're going to do that in another video. And then measures works a little bit differently. Again, we'll do that in another video. For now, that is your start with filtering. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you at the next video.